Yeah, uh, I think, you know, it's very clear to me. I know what works for me. Um, so I'm really happy to share that. But I also want people to critically think about what works for them, what doesn't work for them. Um, I'm always learning information. And, and I've just started up a, a multi-bed community clinic working with some other practitioners. And, you know, it's just so exciting to come across other ideas. It's part of what makes our profession so wonderful. Um, so I, it's much more engaging for me as well to run these kind of workshops. So, yes, I, I get excited about uh, what comes up and people discussing not only what works well for them, that's part of it, but also what they find difficult in clinical practice because we all have difficult cases and that's part of the, the seminar as well. Me discussing what I find difficult, but also drawing out from people what they find difficult. And I just that brings me into the survey. I know what I would like to to talk about, but I'm really also interested in what uh, you guys, what people coming would find the most useful. So there's going to be a link. Please go on and engage in this. It's only 10 questions. Um, and one of them says, is there anything more you'd like to add? So it's very short. Um, it's really just kicking off with some key points um, that, we, that are going to be covered and also asking you what you'd like to be covered. And I will, um, I can compare this because I've done it with other, uh, in different countries, I've done this a similar survey. So I'll be able to give you really pretty pictures of how your group in, in attending this uh, workshop in Dublin, how that um, compares to other places, Sydney and Vancouver and, and, and Victoria and stuff. So that's really quite interesting, just as a, a setting the base of where you're at, what you're seeing in your practice. And then, um, it's, I will build the comments, hopefully. I try to build and answer your comments within the material. So I'm putting the material together now. So as soon as possible, if people can um, engage in the surveys, that way we make sure that you're getting what you the most out of it for you as well. So um, that's going to go out to people, Sandra, is it? The, the yeah, link? absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll put the link out there and get people. We'll send to the ones that are registered already and we'll leave it on the page of those who are, um, um, uh, you know, the Facebook page where they said they're interested in attending. I'll put it there as well so you can get more uh, more feedback from that. Yeah, now it's anonymous, so I can't track you down. And please, so please comment freely. Um, and it is about some of it's what do you do in your practice? Because I want to actually illustrate what I'm, I know what the textbooks say. Um, I want to know what people are really doing. And uh, so those are the, some of the issues we want to look at. Um, so, yeah, it's anonymous. You No way you can be tracked down. Um, it will only ever be reported as a kind of a group report or a few comments. Um, there's no identification. So feel free to put down your concerns, et cetera. And we're going to have such a – it will be so – it's so exciting to work with material like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And th this leads me to the other thing that I wanted to just talk about a little bit, because I know people are going to go on the website and they're going to check out the, the structure, the outline for the three days, and they're going to see that on Friday, and you mentioned yourself talking about research, but here's a very good example of research doesn't have to be scary. It doesn't have to be just all those complicated statistics and numbers. It could be just research on finding out what other people are doing in different parts of, of the of the world as, as you go around and lecture everywhere. But more so than that, when you said it so well about the, the research, it's not every time that this comes about, I kind of have this thing, and I don't know if you noticed a couple of weeks ago, I did that, um, the Facebook Live for the EBA, and it was so close to my heart talking about communication, you know, being Portuguese, speaking Portuguese, now communicating in English because you want to get to more people. And that's the way that I like to look. Like, I love research, but I like to look at it that way, that because I can speak that language too, I can access different people, not just the ones that can speak the language of acupuncture or the language of Chinese medicine. I, I always say it, look at the classics in Chinese. They were translated into different languages, and now we can to read them and then pass it on. So with research, I really like the way that you put it with, it's, it's about having that extra way of communicating and it's going to be useful for other practitioners, you know, for us to communicate with other practitioners, for us to communicate with healthcare policymakers, you know, someone coming along and saying, you know, they could be a midwife or they could be a dual and saying, hey, I've heard about this acupressure thing, but what exactly is it that it, you know, and then you can start talking to them. 
And it's only a few sentences, I find. So it's just getting those, those phrases uh, correct um, so that people relax and open up and then they are more prepared to talk to you. So please don't get me wrong. We're not going to be doing anything that will entitle you to go away and run a statistical test <laughs> on some data. Um, and that's not something I enjoy doing. So Andrews, <laughs> I think you have a slightly different slide, but that's not the research that I enjoy doing. There's many different aspects to it. Um, and it won't, we're not going to cover statistics. That, we're going to cover how to talk about different research concepts. It's about understanding the concepts um, so that you can then speak, um, you know, you have the right phrases um, so that then people will listen to you. So that's how I see it is it's understanding what you need to say so people will listen to what you have to say um, instead of automatically writing you off. And the bigger picture for me is I know we have little private practices and you know that's how we've kind of set up but thinking ahead my gray hair you know the whole thing is the future for me has to be that woman we have such a valuable tool that women have more access to this care than just those who are interested in chinese medicine and seek out chinese medicine practitioners and look coming from working with midwives um, they are so unbiased they only are interested in this because it works and because they see things that Western medicine doesn't deliver. There is no way they're interested in yin and yang and the philosophy and studying for years. And they, if it didn't work, they would walk away. They don't, you know, they don't want to give up their time and their money to do small courses with me if it's not going to really pay good dividends in their busy practice. And in New Zealand now, we have now got a consultant who, and a, a, one of the uh, chief uh, top obstetricians who has employed a midwife as an acupuncturist midwife. So that's a huge leap from the witchcraft stuff that was happening 10 years ago. And I just, they don't do that um, for no good reason. They do it because our medicine has something really valuable to offer in pregnancy. And I think at the moment, we're just, it's, it's not appreciated um, and I would like to see hospital clinics employing acupuncturists. Um, it's not a pipe dream. They do. There are some instances in America. It's opening up in America now um, for other reasons, for the drug addiction side of it and the pain relief side of it and the cancer care. I want um, maternity acupuncture to be there when that all comes in. So I don't want us to be, I don't want the physios to be running the clinics um, in the hospitals for pregnancy which is one of my concerns because they also like it because they use it and it works for them too. So big picture is I want practitioners to become involved in promoting it um, if they would choose. Um, have thriving practices, really enjoy this work, feel really confident in their practice, but also to think for those that want to about how to move out and uh, stake a for someone who is, you know, thinking about attending either the, the one day or the two days or the full three days, do you see, because obviously you, you, you ran this in different parts of the world as well, is it an issue if I'm just a recent graduate or is it a, you know, is this only for if you're in practice for more than five years or is this only for if you only see obstetrics in your clinic or if in other words if i was just graduate and i've actually haven't done much in terms of pregnancy in my clinic is this still going to be attractive to me am i still going to learn from this so i would absolutely i would say that's sort of structured um because i always have a mix you know in in the courses so it is structured and i do try and structure it so that everybody get something for their level and that people who have been practicing, you know, for 20 years still get a chance to, you know, contribute and learn things. And as you know, uh, for that type of practitioner, you're looking for something different. You're looking for a few key points, whereas a beginning practitioner might be looking for quite a lot of information. So I've hopefully structured it in the notes to suit, uh, you know, both groups and people in the middle. One of the most rewarding things I have, because I do, I'm fortunate enough to go back often a couple of years after I've been to a certain place, um, is that people do say that it changed their practice when they came and they didn't, weren't treating that many pregnant people. That, and so, you know, we have this whole handful of, of rooms of people who say, yes, that did actually change my practice. And then afterwards saying to me that they got such a different information out of it coming back again a couple of years later because they were in a different place. So they picked up on different information. And I think that's something we all do. Um, you focus in on what's 
going to be most prevalent for you at the time and there is a lot of information given and so it's it's kind of a scattergun approach so that you know different people will pick up on different information depending on what level you're at so yeah it's um june 7th is the friday so it's june 7th 8th and 9th here in dublin so yeah i'll i'll have all the details then on um i'll post this on social media i'm going to send it to um to the people on the mailing list as well and yeah we're we're looking forward to this and yeah getting people to um start filling in that survey just to get you um as much information as possible and yeah i I always, I said this to you from day one that um, if I would, if I could ever get you on camera, even back oh. in the day of recording to the vlog, I was like, that's, that's it. I'm going to go after that. But the challenges keep coming up, Deborah, because then it was, you know, Sarah was here, then the opportunity came with you. And I was like, oh, now I'm going to have to bring Claudia as well, you know? <laughs> I, I think you create the opportunity, Sandra. So I think that's... Yeah, it's just like, it's, it's insane how it just goes from one challenge to the next challenge and so on. So, uh, uh, yeah, really, really, no, seriously, really appreciate you making the effort to come here. Yeah, well, I'd like people to feel yeah inspired. That uh, So uh, in terms of, yes, I can do that. I mean, I have, I, that is my message because I work, as I said, my work is not only with a woman myself, but um, so that's one thing if I just have all these personal experiences, but it's because I work with fourth year students and I've done so for 10 years. And these are fourth year students in, at school um, working with them in the hospital clinic. So I know that you can deliver, they can deliver good, good quality care and get, you know, really positive results. And I work with midwives and doing short courses where they only have a few weekends training and they get really impressive results from their perspective. So I really feel that this should be accessible to more, to more people. And there's sort of a lot of damage has gone on about not promoting pregnancy through schools and turning it into something that many practitioners are really scared of. Um, you know, other professions are picking it up, midwives and physios. So I'd like us to be yeah. here as well. Yeah. yeah. So okay. let's do it. Let's yeah. do it. Thank you so much for that. And I'm looking forward to seeing you somewhere around the world next time. And then here in Ireland as well. Thank you so much for that. Okay. Not a pleasure.